everyone, this is Heather. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I've got a tutorial for you and we're gonna be making some sweet little ATC cards inspired by Jane Austen. If you're not familiar with ATCs, it stands for Artist Trading Card and they're fun little pieces of art that you can make and trade with your artsy friends. So ATCs measure two and a half by three and a half. They're the same size as a baseball card. And so that's really fun if you've collected a bunch from other artists, they will fit inside a baseball card sleeve. So it's a fun way to store and display them. So for these cards, I'm gonna be using some stamps from Jane Davenport. This is her friendship stamp set. And I really thought these girls with their hairstyles and their on pier waist dresses really looked like kind of Regency, Jane Austen period. So I thought that that would be fun to kind of use as the theme. And I'm also using a large set of rubber stamps from Oxford Impressions. Let's see if I can kind of show you. And this is called Jane Austen. And again, it's got some great Regency images and lots of fun quotes from Jane Austen. So I thought I would use a few of those on my cards. For my bases, I'm just using cardstock and I've just kind of picked out some colors that sort of went with the colors that I'd used on the girls. And I've just cut these pieces of cardstock to two and a half by three and a half. And I'm also using a lot of vintage items today, some vintage sewing notions and papers. So I've picked out three different vintage papers from my stash. I've got a sheet from an old dictionary, from an old children's book, and from an old music sheet. And I have cut these to two and a fourth by three and a fourth. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'll tell you about some places that are great for finding vintage papers. So the coloring medium that I'm using is Jane Davenport's Cream Pastel set, and they come in this really fun little tin. And they sort of remind me of like a lipstick or eyeshadow palette, which I think is kind of the look that she was going for. And these are cream pastels. They're very different from a powdered pastel. They, these have a little bit of like a shimmer and sheen to them, which makes for a really, really pretty look. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it gives a really great shine. And along with the tin, you get a double-sided sponge tip applicator, some applicator refills in case these get really bad, you can change them out. Then there's also a little swatch card. You can see I've already swatched my colors so you can see how the colors look on paper. And there's also some little fun rub-ons that you can use. And then a neat little blending tool that kind of looks like a fun little lipstick. You can pick up most of Jane Davenport's products online or also at craft stores like Michael's. So working with mixed media can get a little bit messy. So I've just grabbed a scratch piece of paper. You could also work on a craft mat. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of a white wash to my papers. So I have some gesso in white and you can pick this up in the art supply section of your craft store. I just have my little paint palette here, just a little plastic tray and I'm going to put a little bit of the gesso on there. I like using a sponge brush for applying this. Uh, you could use a regular paintbrush, but sometimes like the little hairs can come off and get stuck in your project and that's no fun. So I really like the sponge brushes. So all I'm gonna do is just take a small amount of the gesso and spread it on my paper. So the gesso does two things. It will give you that kind of nice white washed look, but it also helps things like your chalks and your stamps stick a little bit better to the vintage paper. So it's kind of like a nice base. So I like to keep mine streaky and messy. I want a little bit of the paper, the vintage paper to show through. So I'm not putting a heavy coat on but you can put as much or as little as you would like. I also like to kind of use the edge of the brush to kind of get some nice streak marks. And this will dry really quickly. 
And as you can see, depending on the color of your vintage paper, if it's more yellow or more white, you're gonna get a little bit of a different look. I've let my gesso air dry for a minute or two, and I'm going to be using some Distress Ink from Tim Holtz. This is Vintage Photo, and I wanted to add a little bit more of an aged paper look. So I'm just taking a sponge dauber and picking up a little bit of the ink and just lightly going around the edges. When you're choosing your vintage paper, you do want to make sure that it's not too old, that it's not really crumbly, that it's not going to tear very easily because you want it to be able to hold up to everything that you're doing. So I'm just going to go around all three of my pieces of paper and add a little bit of that ink around the edges. Using black memento ink, I'm going to stamp my images on my little pieces of paper. I'm gonna stamp the very tall girl in the center of her paper. I'm gonna stamp this girl to the left of hers. And this last girl is gonna to go to the right of her paper. Using the same memento ink, I'm going to stamp out the words. The shorter girl is going to be getting the words, there is no charm equal to tenderness of heart. That's a Jane Austen quote. I've stamped just the Jane Austen signature at an angle next to the tall girl. And this one says, there's nothing like staying at home for real comfort. I'm ready to apply my color, so I'm just going to use the sponge applicator that came in the kit, pick up some of this green ink, and apply that to her dress. So the cream pastels are, like they say, very creamy. Uh, they do go on differently than a chalk pastel. One of the things that's really nice is how smooth and blendable they are. And I do recommend using the applicator that came in the kit. I've tried several different applicators. This one has a really nice smooth sponge on it and it does give you a really nice coverage with the colors. You could also use um, Q-tips, especially if you have some tiny little areas to get in. Or you can also just pick up uh, packages of eyeshadow applicators in places like Target or the grocery store and these will work pretty well as well. So I've applied that pretty yellow green to her dress and I'm using the kind of peachy brown tone to add some color to her skin. And you can layer these on as heavy as you would like and give yourself a little bit more darker colors for a little bit of shadowing. I'm gonna give her some fun kind of purple hair and also pick up one of these pink tones and give her some nice rosy cheeks. So here's her coloring finished. I'm gonna set that off to the side and move on to my next girl. I'm going to use the really pretty soft pink and color in her dress. And I want to show you one really great thing about these pastels is if you go over the edge, just like with chalk pastels, you can take a chalk eraser and just erase that color away. So that really helps if you've made a mistake and gone over the line. I'm gonna give this girl the same skin tone color as the other. Give her some rosy cheeks. So I'm going back into the kind of flesh color for her hair. I'm applying it a little bit heavy. Then I'm also just gonna pick up a little bit of the pink and just kind of mix that in. She has a little flower in her hair. Just kind of give her a little bit of a different tone. So here's her finished. 
Moving on to the last girl, I wanted to leave her skin tone uncolored just for a little bit of a different look. So I'm just going to go in with the light pink and give her some rosy cheeks. I'm using kind of the reddish brown color for her hair. And now with this purple burgundy color, I'm doing her dress. And this is a great place to go in with my eraser and take a little bit of that away from her arms. So with my girls colored, I'm going to apply the papers to my base. I'm using a gel medium. Again, you can find this in the art supply section of your local craft store. I like using this as opposed to a tape runner because a lot of times vintage papers will tear with those. This gives you a nice even coating on the back and will adhere everything down smoothly. So you can just smooth that down and there's no air bubbles or anything and it dries very quickly. So I'm just gonna apply the rest of my girls to their card bases. So for some extra embellishment, I'm going to be using some vintage sewing notions. I recently cleaned out my grandmother's sewing drawer. She hasn't sewed in many, many years and found some really great vintage notions. So I have some rickrack, I have some ribbon, I have some seam binding. You know, it doesn't have to be vintage. I just really like using vintage pieces on my mixed media. But you could just go to the craft store, get some ribbon and trims and things like that. So I've taken my Rick Rack and it's very bright white. So I'm just going to go back to that sponge dauber that I had before that I was inking my paper edges. I'm just going to add a little bit of ink to that. It just kind of helps age it up a little. For this card, I'm going to be taking a piece of the seam binding and just tying it in an overhand bow, just like you would tie your shoes. Just going to adjust it to the size that I want and trim those ends off at an angle. On the back of the bow, I've placed a glue dot. And I'm just gonna adhere that to the side of the card. For the last card, I've got a piece of vintage lace. And it's a little bit wider than what I want. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just trim it down a little bit. I've also applied a couple of glue dots to the back of this card. And I'm just gonna wrap that around and adhere those in place. I also found this box of wonderful little vintage rhinestones. And I'm going to take a little bit of the gel medium you could use any type of liquid adhesive and I'm going to place that on the back. And I'm just going to give each of my girls a little rhinestone embellishment. So I've gone back to my samples because it's going to take a minute for those rhinestones to dry. I think the vintage embellishments just add a really nice touch. I love the Jane Austen quotes. I think it's perfect for this stamp set. So I get a lot of questions about where I find vintage papers. Um, there's a lot of different resources out there. Um, check your local library. Uh, my library has a bookshop where they sell uh, books where they maybe had a lot of copies and they don't need them anymore. People also donate books and magazines. Um, it's a really great place to find um, old books at a really good price. You can try antique shops and flea markets. Um, sometimes you can find inexpensive prices, sometimes not. I also really recommend Half Price Books, which is a chain store that I think is probably across most of the country. And it is a really great resource for vintage papers. They usually have a section of music so go look in the music section and find some uh, booklets of music sheets. I love using music sheets on my collage art. Um, they also will probably have a foreign language section, which is really great too. Gives you just like a nice different text in the background. Uh, you can also find uh, children's books that uh, may be falling apart or they've been drawn in, but there's still some really great papers in there. Um, you can also check places like Etsy and eBay. Um, 
you'll find a lot of pricier vintage books, but you'll also probably find some lots that have some old torn up books. I don't like to tear up, you know, good, usable, readable books. I go for things that have been ripped up, falling apart, bug eaten, whatever. Um, and it's a really great way to upcycle and recycle. You also want to make sure that the pages are going to be sturdy enough to work with and just be really careful when you're working with them, when you're trimming them with your paper trimmer or applying your mixed media art because um, they can tear a little bit easier. So I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to make these fun little mixed media Jane Austen inspired ATCs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel. Consider subscribing. I have lots of other card tutorials, product reviews for you to check out. And I really hope you have an artsy day. This is Heather. Bye.